this week at Starbase. Excitement was definitely in the air as final preparations are being made ahead of the sixth flight test of Starship and Super Heavy, currently scheduled for this coming Tuesday. Now let's dig into this week's update. Workers at the build site continued their preparations for Flight 6 on Friday, bringing the hot stage load spreader into Mega Bay 1. The hot stage adapter was then brought into the bay for installation on Booster 13. A pair of Raptor delivery crates were shipped out of the production site, heading up Highway 4 towards Brownsville. As work continues to reconfigure the site for the two pads, sections of concrete wall in the orbital tank farm near some of the smaller methane tanks were cut out and removed. Load straps were connected to the SpaceX LR-11000 to begin removing more of the safety netting from the second launch tower. New deliveries of structural steel continue to arrive at Starbase as build-out continues at Star Factory and the new office building. A booster CO2 tank was wheeled out of Mega Bay 1 and positioned for a tandem lift by the bridge crane and the smaller Buckner-owned crane. The Buckner crane was then attached to the bottom of the CO2 tank. Using the crane to keep the tank off the ground, the CO2 tank was lifted upright for installation. A load of steel with mounting fixtures was delivered to the ring yard at the build site. A telehandler was used to pick up the steel parts and take them inside Star Factory. Back at the launch site, SpaceX's crane removed one of the catch nets from Tower 2. Crane cribbing was delivered to the launch site. These pieces of wood are used to help spread the load and protect the ground underneath the tracks of crawler cranes. Another piece of the old concrete wall was removed from the propellant farm in front of the smaller CH-4 tanks. Two 16-axle SPMTs were rolled out of the ring yard, one empty and one loaded with counterweights. A crane was then brought over and began transferring and unloading the weights as the transports were set up to relocate Ship 31. SpaceX's crane assisted in the continued removal of the Saren CC-8800 crane parts, slewing around to set a boom section onto a trailer. A steel plate was then set up inside the inner ring of the launch mount. The plate was taken out about 30 minutes later. A third concrete segment was removed from the orbital tank farm wall late in the afternoon. The two partly loaded SPMTs were then carefully maneuvered in the ring yard and brought to the high bay to be set up under Ship 31 for rollout. Crews began a battery of pre-stack testing on the launch tower, starting with the chopsticks, which were raised part way up. The ship quick disconnect arm was then swung out, taking its lift off position on the tower. After the arm test, the chopsticks were then opened while the ship quick disconnect arm was swung back to its resting position. The port side arm was actuated at full speed for a short distance, performing two short closing motions before both arms were brought to the port side and lowered down to the hard stop. Down on the launch mount, the booster quick disconnect hood was open and the interface panel was extended. Late at night, part of the cladding was removed from the connection between Star Factory and the office building. Saturday was engine installation day for Starship 33, with all six of its Raptor 2 engines being brought to Mega Bay 2, starting with Vacuum Raptor 275. A second Vacuum Raptor, number 305, was the next engine to be brought in. The three sea level Raptor engines were next, starting with engine 385 and followed by engines 345 and 316. The sixth and final engine, Vacuum Raptor 398, was brought to the doorway of Mega Bay 2 shortly before midnight and joined the rest of the engines. New shielding panels were installed on the orbital launch mount, providing protective cover for the new valve and venting assemblies. After being left open overnight, the Booster Quick Disconnect interface panel was retracted and the hood was closed. The fourth and final side section of the second level of the new orbital launch mount was delivered to Sanchez. Once it was brought in, the on-site Grove Crane unloaded the launch table section and set it down for later installation. Veterans Day began with workers setting up for concrete placement near the new commodities trench for the second tower. The trench will carry propellant supply lines when it's complete. Starship 31 was brought out of the high bay, revealing its modified heat shield with fewer tiles on the sides. 
SpaceX plans to eventually install catch hardware on the side of the ship, but they need to be sure the ship can survive re-entry without tiles in those locations. In a fun homage to old memes, a sticker with a pixel art banana from the viral peanut butter jelly time video is holding a banana for scale. High density polyethylene conduit was run on the opposite side of the road near the launch complex. Horizontal drilling was used to run the conduit across the road to the launch site without disrupting traffic. After a few hours outside, Ship 31 was then brought back into the high bay. The water deluge system, which protects the pad surface from the intense force of the Super Heavy's exhaust plume, was activated in the afternoon, verifying that the system is ready to support the next launch of Starship and Super Heavy. That launch is currently scheduled for no earlier than Tuesday the 19th, but may slip to a later date. Ship 31 was rolled out of High Bay and was turned around outside of Star Factory before rolling down to Highway 4. The ship and SPMTs were soon on their way with the convoy, following the ship for its trip to the launch complex. Once it arrived, Ship 31 was driven over to the launch pad and parked next to the tower for the arrival of Booster 13 and eventual stacking. Workers then began installing brackets on the office building's facade on Tuesday, which would hold SpaceX's characteristic logo. Two concrete utility vaults were brought into the launch complex, carried into the site by telehandlers. By the end of the day, the launch curve of SpaceX's logo was taking shape, while other workers continued to work on the facade in the space between the offices and the Star Factory. At the Sanchez site, the final prefabricated section of the second level of the new orbital launch mount was lowered into place, leaving just a few gaps to fill in before the second level of the launch table is finished. A booster transport stand was driven out between the two mega bays before being parked behind Star Factory. Three propellant transfer tubes were seen being brought to the door of Mega Bay 2 for uprighting and installation. The first was soon followed by the second, and eventually by the third. These three pipes are used to transfer propellants from the header tanks and from the main fuel tank to the vacuum engines. The booster transport stand was then moved into Mega Bay 1 on Wednesday, ahead of Booster 13's rollout. The next of Booster 16's liquid oxygen tank sections was brought out to the ring yard ahead of installation. Looking at the outside of the offices, only one course of glass was left to install in the concourse between it and Star Factory. A pair of large pipeline assemblies were delivered to the launch complex. These will carry propellants to the second pad. Booster 16 was then lifted off its work stand inside Mega Bay 1 and set down on the booster transport stand. The hot stage adapter has also been fitted to the top of the booster. SpaceX's LR-11000 was moved around the launch site as work continues towards the next flight of Starship and Super Heavy. Back at the office site, Glazers and other workers finished installing the glass elements of the facade between the two structures as well as the base of the SpaceX logo by the end of the afternoon. Meanwhile, the two boom segments of the Saren's crane departed the launch site. Later on, one of the launch site's container offices was brought out of the complex through the D2 gate. Workers at Starbase gathered for a photo op with Booster 13, posing in front and on top of the booster transport stand ahead of rollout for Flight 6. Booster 13 began its journey to the launch site shortly after midnight on Thursday, taking about an hour to drive down to the launch pad. The booster and transport were maneuvered between the chopsticks to get the booster onto the launch mount as soon as possible. Early on Thursday morning, Booster 16's LOX tank section was brought into Mega Bay 1 for installation, making the tank 20 out of 24 rings tall. Five hours after arriving at the launch site, Booster 13 was attached to the chopsticks and raised onto the launch mount. The booster's positioning needed a bit of fine-tuning before it was ready to be attached to the hold-down clamps in the inner ring. While the chopsticks worked on positioning the booster, lay-down began of SpaceX's crane to protect the boom from the launch. Once the booster was fixed to the launch table, the chopsticks were swung out to the side for Starship stacking. Workers at the office applied white panels on the X outside of the building while work continued on the exterior fittings. 
Ship 31 was moved in front of the recently lowered chopsticks, stopping short of them while the arms were reset for the ship. Construction waits for no launch, as concrete work continued on the foundations for additional tank farm equipment. Two hours after stopping in front of the chopsticks, the ship was moved into the arms. The first of the large pipe assemblies seen previously was fitted to one of the new subcoolers at the tank farm. The subcoolers are used to further chill the propellants to increase their density ahead of loading. Once the ship was in a good position, the chopstick arms were raised to the lifting points and closed around Ship 31. The SpaceX's crane upper and lower block were unexpectedly removed before being shipped out of the launch site. SpaceX's signature logo was lit up for the first time in the South Texas twilight, similar to the company logo over the launch pad gate. After sunset, Ship 31 was lifted up and set down on top of the booster, with the ship quick disconnect arm quickly being brought into place. We're not quite sure if the flight termination system was installed on the ship yet, so there might be one more de-stack and restack before flight. With the stack assembled, the port side stabilizer pin was pulled off the orbital launch mount. The starboard pin would follow later. Back at the build site, the fuel tank downcomer was staged outside Mega Bay 1 for installation on Booster 16. This tube is used to carry methane down to the Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines. This week at the Cape, the support ship Harvey Stone towed Blue Origin's Jacklin landing ship out to sea on Friday for reasons unknown. Signet Warhorse 1 towed a short fall of Gravitas out to sea to support the Starlink Group 6-69 mission ahead of its Veterans Day launch. SpaceX support ship Bob returned to port on Saturday, carrying the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-77 launch. Bob then headed back out to sea in the evening to support the Koreasat 6A mission. The tug Corrine C towed just read the instructions back to port on Sunday, bringing back Falcon 9 booster 1085 after successfully launching Starlink Group 6-77. The booster was then lifted off the drone ship just a few hours later and set down on the dockside stand. Veterans Day Monday began with Signet Warhorse 3 towing just read the instructions out to sea to support the Starlink Group 6-68 launch scheduled for Thursday. The Korea Sat 6A mission lifted off in an unusual return to launch site landing while carrying the satellite to geostationary transfer orbit. Starlink Group 6-69 lifted off in the evening on Falcon 9 Booster 1080, carrying 24 Starlink satellites into orbit. Support ship Doug returned to Port Canaveral on Wednesday, carrying the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-69 mission, which were soon set to be offloaded at the docks. Signet Warhorse 1 also returned after supporting the Starlink 6-69 mission, towing a short fall of Gravitas and Booster 1080 back to port. Starlink Group 6-68 was launched on Thursday morning, with Falcon 9 Booster 1076 lofting another 24 Starlink satellites into orbit. Booster 1085 finished its stay at the docks and was lowered down onto the transport for refurbishment at Roberts Road. Booster 1080 was then unloaded from a short fall of Gravitas and set down on the dockside stand to undergo post-flight stowage. A short fall of Gravitas was once again towed out to sea by Signet Warhorse 1 ahead of its next mission, which should be the Optus X launch, currently scheduled to lift off just hours after this video drops. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Here's to hoping we see Flight 6 lift off in two days. Until then, we'll see you next time. Lab Padre, out.